Good evening, friends. Good afternoon, and as well as good morning from uh, friends from all around the world. Yeah, a very good warm welcome to everyone for tuning in to the uh, Top Liners Web Travel Series. How is everyone doing? Please uh, type in in the chat box. Uh, great if you uh, is everything is okay for you and you can hear us loud and clear. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, I'm Ming from uh, Top Liners Club, and I will be your host today. Uh, Top Liners Club is a licensed uh, bespoke travel agency in Singapore and what we do is that we customize all the itineraries and recommend the most suitable experience and accommodations for our customers. You can actually find out more about us at our website at uh, toplinersclub.com. Okay, together with me tonight uh, is uh, Julian who is my business partner in this company and also the co-host. Okay, he'll be basically uh, helping us with the back-end work and uh, he is also the host for our Southern Africa webinars. So do check them out uh, on our Facebook page or YouTube channel for the playbacks. Okay, and next I would like to introduce uh, this very special person, uh, our guest speaker all the way from uh, Zurich, Miss Katerina. Katerina is a veteran travel professional running a Swiss travel company called Swiss Epic Tours and is our working partner in Switzerland. Hello, Hello Katerina. Everybody. Hello Ming, hello everybody, good evening, very nice to meet you again and I'm excited to share some more information tonight with you guys. Sure, okay and then today we are also very honored to have Oliver who is based in Singapore uh, from the Switzerland Tourism Board. This Oliver has lived in both Switzerland and Singapore for a number of years so he will be sharing uh, some unique perspective definitely. Yeah, hello. Hello, hello and hello Singapore. It's a pleasure to be back. Thank you very much for this opportunity and I'm looking forward to share some Swiss insights with you. Yeah, thank you Oliver for joining us tonight. Oliver is actually uh, very localized already because he has <laughs> been uh, living in Singapore for a number of years. So uh, he will definitely be sharing some very good uh, perspective from the uh, Asian perspective. Yeah, so feel free to ask him any questions. And uh, just to introduce a little bit about uh, this Top Liners web travel series, they are basically uh, bite-sized travel webinars for different destinations that are sharply focused, casual and candid. So we actually endeavor to keep each uh, session within a maximum of one hour as best as we can. And then uh, this Switzerland travel series will be run on a bi-weekly basis. So uh, we will do the sessions on a Wednesday night like uh, today, same timing at 8.30 p.m. Okay, and today is our second episode of the uh, Switzerland Travel Series and we will be talking about the best mountains to visit in Switzerland. Okay, we will be sharing about some of the most well-known mountains as well as those that are off the beaten path. So you know which will be more suitable for you. So you have probably seen some mountains uh, in the videos we played just now. And for those who wish to watch it again, uh, I will be, I will be uh, typing in a, a link for you. Uh, where you can re-watch all these videos again in the chat box later. Okay, our next uh, episode will basically be held on the 30th of September, 8.30 p.m. We'll be talking about the best wine and dine experience in Switzerland. So please make sure you join us after a full dinner, okay? Don't come, uh, don't feel hungry and uh, what, while watching the session, okay? I'm sure there will be many good food, uh, good videos as well as photos of the uh, best food in uh Best, best gastronomy experience in uh, Switzerland that will be showcased during the session. Okay, so today do feel free to ask us any questions during the session. Okay, as we will be stopping after every region to answer some questions. Okay, as we are trying to keep the session short, uh, we will try our best to address all questions relating to the, to the topic we have set for today. And uh, if you have any other questions that are uh, unanswered today, feel free to write to us by email uh, and we will write, we will answer them uh, promptly. Okay, we will reply them. All right, uh, enough of my talking. I would like, now like to hand over the time to our beautiful guest speaker, Miss Katerina, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ming. And one more time, good evening, everybody. Um, I will share my screen with you because we have prepared a presentation about these mountains. So let me just. See, I think it should be possible for everybody now to see our presentation about the best mountains to visit. Can everybody see it well? Yes. 
Yes, it's visible. Okay, so then let's start. Um, we have picked three regions for tonight's session. Of course, um, when we talk about Switzerland, uh, there are many, many mountains and mountain areas to explore. But as Ming said, we will try to keep this session in a maximum uh, one hour's time. So therefore, we have picked actually three main areas, very important mountain areas in our country. First, we will be speaking about the Lucerne area, and that's located here a little bit in the middle of the country, middle north of the country. This is the main city, Lucerne. And from Lucerne, it's possible to visit the mountains we are going to be talking about. Then the second area we will be speaking about is the Jungfrau area in the Bernese Oberland. So that is the area located here. You can see here two lakes. And in the middle of these lakes, there is a beautiful town called Interlaken. Now from Interlaken, it's possible to visit the next couple of mountains we will be talking about. So this area, the Swiss Alps with the higher mountains, even above 3000 meters. And then the last area we will be talking about is located here in the south of the country. It's the area where is the car-free village Zermatt. And we will be speaking about two different mountains. One is called the Matterhorn. I'm quite sure it's a well-known mountain also for Singaporeans. And the other area we will be talking about is uh, the Gorne Grat. So that's a little bit more off the beaten path. So now one by one, starting in the Lucerne area, so central Switzerland. Now, I think the most well-known mountain in this area is called Mount Tiglis. And Montiglis is famous because there you can see the eternal snow. How to travel up Mount Tiglis? Well, you take uh, two different cable cars to reach the top of the mountain above 3000 meters. And what is very special about the trip to the top is that the second cable car is uh, the Tiglis rotor cable car, which means when you are inside of this cable car, it makes a round of 360 degrees. So that means you will be able to see the area from all different uh, angles, actually, because until you reach the top, you have made a full round of these 360 uh, degrees. It's the world's first revolving cable car. So that's definitely a very special experience. Now, on top of Mount Tiglis, what can you do there? There are several activities. Um, there is this ice flyer chairlift that looks like this. Um, some of you maybe know the chairlifts from if you have been skiing at all or if you have been to the mountains already one time in Switzerland we have quite a lot of this kind of uh, chairlifts and this specific one is not meant for going skiing but just to have a beautiful panorama view over the glacier so it's a, a ride of approximately 15 minutes you can just sit back relax in this chairlift and you have the feeling you are flying over the glacier that's a fantastic experience Another activity you can do on top of Mount Tiglis is the suspension bridge. It's the image over here on the left. You need a little bit nerves of steel because when you walk over this bridge, apart from having a beautiful view, it will be moving as well. So you move at 3000 meters and you have this fantastic view over the Swiss Alps. Then on top of Mount Tiglis, we have also a glacier cave. Glacier Gave, so you can go inside and you have some beautiful ice sculptures there as well. So these are the main activities to do on top of the mountain. Now, as I said already, we have guarantee of snow and it's possible all year long to go, uh, yeah, actually sliding a little bit downhill from the mountain. Of course, not completely from the top, but a little bit downhill. There are some fun snow activities you could do. In winter time, so then we're speaking about the months December, January, February and March. It's also possible to book um, some ski lessons here on the mountain. Then you have to go to the middle station and it's possible to book uh, the possibility to have a ski teacher. He will teach you how to use the skis. All the equipment is there. You can rent there like the skis themselves, also some nice warm jackets. So if you would like to do this kind of experience during two, three hours maybe uh, for a day, just to feel a little bit what it is like to go skiing in the Swiss Alps, that's definitely a possibility you could explore here as well. And regarding this image here in the middle, this one, this, is, uh, this lake is called Trübse. This is located at the middle station. And this is a very nice area also to get off the cable car, walk a little bit around or in winter time to play there in the snow. Some nice fun snow activities, not only for children, also very nice for adults. 
Regarding uh, restaurants, on top of Mount Tigris, we have two very good restaurants. There is a à la carte restaurant and there is a self-service restaurant as well with a very famous and good Indian buffet. And halfway the mountain, so where this lake is located, there is another um, very good or quite good restaurant as well. And also a hotel. So you could even overnight here if you would like. So this regarding uh, Mount Tigris, it's perfectly doable to visit this mountain from the, the city of Lucerne located in central Switzerland. I don't know if Oliver would like to add some information regarding this Mount Stiglitz? Yes, I can. Uh, maybe one thing to start with, uh, because we're talking about uh, several mountains and mountain excursions, uh, which is almost a part or let's say a transportation uh, topic today. And in Switzerland, we have the so-called Swiss travel pass, which means it's a, a all-in-one ticket for public transportation, uh, valid for a specific number of days. And with this Swiss travel pass, you have on most of the cable cars and mountain excursions, you already have a discount of uh, about 50%. Some mountain excursions are even free of charge. So I will add this information for every excursion or mountain excursion or mountain we discuss, I will add this information, whether you get 50% or whether it's free of charge or you get 25%. Uh, Mount Titlis, you have a 50% discount uh, already. So this makes it uh, absolutely worth getting this Swiss travel pass. I can still, uh, at the end, I can give you more information about that if this is required. Uh, Regarding the experiences or my tips that I have for this mountain, also from the perspective of uh, half Asian nowadays, after six years in Singapore. Uh, first of all, you mentioned the restaurant on top, uh, and this is really a restaurant that is perfectly suitable for Asian clients. They are also able to cater for let's say the Chinese palate, uh, they can really provide excellent, almost uh, original Asian food like we have it here. Uh, they provide all the spicy sauces. Uh, they, they know what, what we here in Singapore or Southeast Asia, what kind of food we like. So this is like a safe choice. Uh, they even have uh, Southeast Asian chefs up there. So this is definitely a place where you won't starve. And one thing that I highly recommend is the, the first ski experience. You mentioned that as well. And actually the idea to create this kind of offer was because uh, Switzerland tourism industry, they wanted to cater to the needs of Asian clients. So this is actually kind of a tailor-made program for Asians who are not experienced with any skiing at all. So you don't need to have any skills. You don't need to bring any gear, nothing. You just go there. Uh, your ski instructor would even pick you up at the hotel. He brings you to the place where you start skiing. And it, yes, it is the children's area. It's really the basic. It's not steep, not at all. So they will teach you how to wear the boots. You will start walking with the skiing boots, which is already quite a, a new kind of feeling. You will stand on the ski, then you will slightly, softly, slowly start moving and they really, they take care of you and they provide everything you need, goggles and, and sticks and, and gloves and everything, helmets, so you're well, very well taken care of. And if you're a natural and they realize, okay, you are you're good in skiing, then they might, if you, if you want and you agree, they can bring you to one of the real slopes and you can do your first uh, skiing experience in, in real and not only like the, the test. And uh, this is in the area uh, of uh, the Trübsee Lake, uh, the middle station. So if some of you uh, want to try and your family members, they are not keen, they can do others, no experiences there, or they can in summertime, uh, of course, the skiing there is not possible, but in wintertime, they have some other possibilities to uh, kill some time, or they can go to the restaurant or just take pictures and video of you uh, trying to ski. So it's definitely uh, worth a try.
Great. Okay. Thank you very much, Oliver. Yes. So the teachers really adapt to your level. That's important, uh, as Oliver mentioned. So even if you have no experience at all, it's I think it's a real nice uh, possibility to try this out. And they have sometimes even uh, some uh, Asian skin structures. Some uh, Chinese speaking sometimes. Great. So you guys know where to uh, look for your rice if you miss any of uh, those while in Switzerland, yeah? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, then we will move on to the next mountain. And this mountain is a little bit less well known, I think, but in the same area of Lucerne, central Switzerland. And it's called Mount Pilatus. A little bit lower mountain, approximately 2,000 meters. And it's, uh, what is special about this mountain is, I think, the different means of transportation. That means one of the highlights is the golden round trip, definitely. Now, what does that mean? We have seen it already a little bit in the video before we started this session. Um, it showed also Mount Pilatus. Now, this golden round trip means you can travel up to the top of the mountain by cable car. And you can, of course, do some activities on top of the mountain, enjoy the beautiful view. And then you can travel down by cockwheel train, the steepest cockwheel train in the world with 48% of inclination. So that's definitely a fantastic experience. And then when you reach the valley, you can take a boat, travel by the Lake of Lucerne back to the city of Lucerne. The boat ride takes approximately one hour, a little bit more. So you have these three means of transportation. You have the cable cars, you have the cockwheel train, and you have this boat. And you can do it both ways around. So you can decide if you want to start with the cable car and finish with the boat ride, or if you would like to start with the boat ride and then go up with the cockwheel train and come down again with the cable car. Now this golden round trip is possible to do in the summer season. Summer season for this starts normally beginning of May, the first or the second weekend in May, and it lasts normally until the end of October. In winter time, you can still visit uh, Mount Pilatus, then the possibility is to travel up and down with the cable car. Now on top of Mount Pilatus, what can you do? You can go uh, hiking, and that sounds maybe a little bit funny to go hiking uh, on top of Mount Pilatus, but they have a beautiful hiking trail. It lasts approximately 45 minutes and it's really doable also for starters. So you do not need any experience. You also don't have to take real hiking equipment apart from good shoes. And then you can do this beautiful hiking trail, which uh, shows you panoramic views over the lake um, of Lucerne and over the mountain peaks with the snow tops even. That is a beautiful thing to do. You can do this um, all year long. In winter time, at the middle station, you can go sledging as well, as you are taking two different cable cars. So when you get off the first cable car, you have a beautiful park for children to play. And there is also the possibility for sledging in winter time. And there is the toboggan run in summertime. So plenty of activities. You can also decide, for example, if you travel up by cable car to get off in the middle station to first spend some time over there and then afterwards to continue to the top of the mountain. On the top of the mountain you will find uh, two restaurants as well. There is a self-service restaurant and there is an a la carte restaurant and for those who would like to spend the night in the mountains there are two hotels located there as well and that's definitely a very special experience to spend the night on top of Mount Pilatus. Now your ticket, you do not have to worry then if you decide to overnight on top of the mountain, the ticket to uh, travel up is then valid as well again for traveling down the next day if you buy the uh, way and return. So you do not have to use this ticket only on the first day, you can keep the ticket until the second or the, the third day. It's about uh, Mount Pilatus. Then I, I add the information about the ticketing and the reduction. So again here, 50% discount with the Swiss travel pass. And my, my favorites on Mount Pilatus are uh, definitely what I like is the flexibility that you have to, to go there with the both sides that you can approach the mountain uh, with the cable cars, with the gondolas, uh, with the boat. So this is really, you don't have to, 
backtrack. You really have this round trip, so this is uh, definitely cool. I had the chance once to stay overnight on top of the mountain, and this is definitely uh, a cool experience because uh, at uh, yeah early evening there are no more cable cars and gondolas going down, which means no one is coming up, so it's very quiet. You have the fresh, crisp air. You have, uh, yeah, you are almost part of the nature. And uh, when I had the chance to stay there, one of the nature experiences I had, I will never forget, is that I opened the window in the morning. I opened the window of my room and I saw the ibexes uh, walking around uh, at the, on the rocks next to the, next to the hotel. And uh, you can do a little hike up to this, uh, to, in direction of the summit. And uh, if you're lucky, you can see those ibexes as well. And they are not scared of you. I mean, of course, they, they are not coming close, but uh, they are there and you can kind of observe them. This was uh, quite impressive and uh, definitely worth staying up there. It, it, it's, uh, it's something different. Instead of going back to the city, uh, you have this nature experience. I can recommend that. And uh, yeah, also, if you have a family, it's maybe a good idea to go there uh, at the middle station you mentioned with the, where you can do the sledging or in summer the toboggan run. There is also a rope park, which means you can climb uh, through the, the canopies and the trees. Uh, very cool, especially for kids. Uh, they love that to, to climb on the trees and they're secured with a harness. So uh, don't you worry, it's not dangerous. So uh, that's uh, my, uh, my uh, favorite stuff uh, or my favorite experience up uh, on Mount Pilatus. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, then we move on to the next mountain and that's Mount Rigi, the queen of the mountains. More or less the same altitude as Mount Pilatus, a little bit uh, lower it is, and it's located again in the same area, just at the other side of Lake Lucerne. You can travel up this mountain as well by cable car and by cockwheel, cockwheel train. There are actually two different cockwheel trains from both sides of the mountains. One starts in Witz now, and the other one in Artenbuhl, that's the other side of the mountain. And then when you reach the top of the mountain, you normally have a beautiful view of the area. Um, you can see two lakes from the top. You can see the lake of Zouk, the area of Zouk, and the lake of Lucerne, which we also know as the lake of the four cantons. Activities on top of the mountain, uh, definitely hiking, panorama hiking, uh, I call it, because there is the possibility to walk down, uh, downhill a little bit. It's not a very long walk, like half an hour more or less, to reach again the cable car station. And it's recommendable because you have a beautiful view over the area during all the hike. And it's not a very challenging hike. So for those of you who would like to try that out, that is possible here on uh, Mount Rigi. Um, in the winter time, you will find uh, some snow here as well. And um, for those of you who have attended, uh, attended the session two weeks ago, um, we spoke about the wellness centers in Switzerland a little bit. Now, Mount Rigi is famous for wellness as well. If you would go to the middle station, so only travel up by cable car and get off the cable car, then there is a beautiful uh, spa and wellness center over there. And that is really something nice, I think, to do in winter time because you can be inside of the swimming pool outside, see the snow peaks, feel the snow even uh, next to you on the field, get out of the water a little bit, stand in the snow and then jump in the pool again. That's definitely, a, I think, once in a lifetime experience. So this is something you can do um, on Andrigi. Andrigi also has this uh, possibility to travel back then by boat um, until Lucerne. So you can do a kind of round trip if you like here as well. On, for Andrigi this is possible um, all year long. So you could do this also in winter time. So take the boat in Lucerne, then travel up by cable car, travel down uh, by cockwheel train or vice versa. Completely depending on uh, what, what your time schedule is and how you would like to design uh, your trip. Very well combinable with uh, a day trip to Lucerne as well. So imagine you stay in Lucerne or you stay in the city of Zurich, for example. You can combine a visit to all of these three mountains, half day visit to the mountain and half day visit to uh, Lucerne, for example, and then you would have a very complete excursion day. 
Yeah, and uh, an additional highlight uh, of Mount Rigi is if you have a Swiss travel pass, this mountain excursion is completely free of charge. So you don't have to pay a single cent in addition to that, except you want to have some food up there or you buy some souvenirs. But the transportation up and down free of charge for the Swiss travel pass holders. So that's definitely uh, a highlight. Uh, maybe one word uh, to um, about the hiking, uh, the level of hiking for or the standard for Swiss and for Singaporeans are not exactly the same. Uh, for Swiss people, if they have, have to hike uh, one hour, that's, uh, that's nothing, so they prefer to maybe hike two, three hours. For Singaporeans, two, three hours, that's uh, already quite an achievement. So don't you worry. In Switzerland, you have the choice to decide how long and uh, you want to walk and how difficult the, the tracks or the paths should be. And since uh, we have a very dense transportation network, there is always the chance to take a cable car, to take a train, to kind of shortcut or to, to skip the, the steeper parts or the, the long parts. So it's really very enjoyable. And especially on Mount Riki, you have uh, all the views and it's not all the time very steep. So uh, it's, sometimes it's quite, quite flat as well. So don't you worry about that. And uh, definitely the, the spa you mentioned, I did that just last winter when I was able to go to Switzerland. Uh, this hot cold, hot cold change from the warm water that is 36, 37 degrees warm. And then the snow or the air temperature that was about four degrees. Uh, it's really, it's cool and, and hot course and uh, one addition if you if you like records because I realized when I went through the slides every mountain we talk about have something uh, unique or special or has its own record uh, and Mount Rigi has the is it a world record no it's not just a European record it was the first mountain railway in Europe they built it in 1871 and uh, so it was really the first cable uh, mountain railway and in 1900 something 1907 it was the first electrical wreck railway in the whole world so this is a little bit of history as well and uh, a perfect mountain for for people who stay in the in the city it's not too high easy to reach and uh, in winter time you also have this snow experience Thank you very much, Oliver. Um, we will move on to the next area of Switzerland, but I would like to ask maybe if there are maybe, yeah. if you know, if there are any questions in the chat box, if somebody yeah. would like to ask a question. Yep. At, uh, at this moment, uh, does anyone have any questions uh, regarding uh, this region, Lucerne? Yeah, regarding the uh, few mountains that have been shared. Okay, meanwhile, I would just uh, like to share. Uh, I would I would strongly recommend uh, Lucerne as a good base for you to uh, start your mountain excursions uh, to all these mountains. Basically, you can do day trips, you can do combination tours, including uh, hiking, snow activities, or even shopping. You no, know? and also you you can use it uh, as a base to do uh, to come back to after an overnight trip on the mountain. So because it's it's basically located in the center of Switzerland with very good uh, connectivity to trains and buses. So if you do not have much time in Switzerland, I think this is actually a perfect region for you to explore the mountains. Yeah. Okay, we have one question from Vishnu. Uh, do you say these three mountains are best visited during winter for snow and ski? Or did I hear it wrongly? Um, well, in winter time, if you, if you want to go skiing, you can definitely go uh, to Mount Tidlis. Mount Tidlis, uh, there is this, possible, uh, this possibility to go skiing and also this first ski experience. As Oliver explained, it was designed for the, uh, mostly for the Asian clients. So that is possible to do on uh, Mount Tidlis. You will find snow as well in winter time, most of the times on top of Mount Rigi and uh, on top of Mount uh, Pilatus. But there they do not have this um, snow experience or ski experience designed 
for uh, Asian travelers. So if you would like to try to go skiing, then the mountain where you should go in winter time is Mount Tipis in this area. Okay. There was an additional question, yes. which is the, the typical winter month. So usually yes. the season, the winter season start uh, late November or early December and it lasts until uh, mid-March, end of March, depending on the altitude of the ski resorts and where there is a lot of snow. But usually, as a rule of thumb, uh, the last uh, ski experience you could do during Easter, during the Easter weekend. Yeah. So uh, Vishnu, there are basically yeah. some uh, other mountains that you can do uh, snow activities in other seasons as well. Uh, we can share with you uh, if you are interested. Yeah. 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 Okay. We to... If we Swiss travel pass, any student, senior, or online rates that are discounted? There are some some different rates. Uh, there is a youth pass uh, for seniors. No, there is no uh, discount for seniors. Uh, there are uh, family tickets, which means if you have kids that are. Uh, between 6 and uh, 16 years old and one of the parents travels with the kids and has a valid pass, then the kids are free of charge. So you just have to get uh, a free family card and you just have to enter the name and the passport numbers of the kids and then they can travel free of charge accompanied by at least one parent. Yeah, thank you. Okay, shall we move on? That's good, and we will come to speak a little bit more uh, about uh, snow activities as well. Ah, we had an additional yeah, mountain one, as yeah. well in the Lucerne area. Yeah, <laughs> this one is, a, is the last one. We want to introduce you in the Lucerne area, very special as well. And um, the Stoes Bahn, what is very typical about this area or this uh, funicular, mm -hmm. we can say it's the steepest one in Europe and probably even in the world, 110%. And what is uh, interesting to do here is hiking as well again, not only on the top of the mountains, but also at the middle stations. You can get off, you have these beautiful viewing points. So that's definitely something very special. And this funicular railway is uh, pretty new. It's opened only a couple of years ago. It's not very old and it's a fantastic experience to travel up the mountain like this. So also in the area of Lucerne, this one. The only one wants to add yeah. something about this one. Yeah. I quickly looked it up. It's really the steepest funicular in the whole world. Yeah. And uh, they opened in December 2017. So it's really brand new. Let's say that. Let's put it that way. Uh, and it's the only uh, funicular of its kind uh, worldwide. And this mountain is definitely, let's say for Asian visitors, it's like a hidden gem. I mean... You won't find it in, in many itineraries, probably in, in no group tour. Uh, so this is really something you can brag when you're back in Singapore that you have been there. And for the, the shopping addicted people just nearby, just uh, two, one, two villages next to the, the valley station, there is the, the factory and the head office of the Victorinox knives. So you could easily combine a visit to Mount Stoes with the Victorinox where you could assemble your own uh, Swiss army knife, for example. Definitely a, a good idea as well in a, in a small village next to the lake uh, and good for bringing home some, some souvenirs. And this ticket, when you have a Swiss travel pass, else also free of charge. Yeah. Good, then we would move on to the next area. And this is the Jungfrau Joch area. I think Jungfrau is maybe uh, well known, uh, the name at least, in Singapore. Jungfrau Joch is a very famous mountain in the Swiss Alps. So if you go to the Jungfrau Joch, you definitely have been to the Swiss Alps. What is special about the Jungfrau Joch mountain is we call it also the, the top of Europe um, because there is the highest railway station in Europe and that's really something very special. So if you want to go to the top, you travel up at the moment still, you travel up by train, you take two different ones, first one until Kleine Scheidegg, 
It's already a beautiful area. There you would have to change trains. Very easy procedure. Do not worry about that. And then you take this highest uh, railway until the top of the mountain. And when you reach the top of the mountain, you will be above 3,400 meters. You have several activities you can do. And actually, they designed it in a very good way because there is a tour you can do with several numbers. And if you would just follow the numbers, automatically you would see all the highlights on top of the Jungfrau Joch mountain. There is, for example, uh, an elevator, a Sphinx elevator, we call it, that brings you to a platform, a sightseeing platform, an observation desk. You can go outside as well and have a look over the glaciers. Um, there is a glacier plateau over there, a snow fun park where you can do these snow fun activities and not only in winter time, also in summertime. So this is a typical snow mountain. You have guarantee of snow when you reach the top of this mountain. Also, for example, on the 1st of July or the 1st of August, which is normally the summer season in Switzerland. Something else what is, I think, nice to, to visit here is this ice palace. Here you can see an image as well an ice palace, you can go inside and admire the beautiful ice sculptures as well. And they have an area here on top of the mountain which is quite interesting, where you can walk inside of a, a kind of a tunnel and you can learn about the history of this Jungfrau railway. So you can learn how it was built, when it was built, what material was used and so on. So the history of this Jungfrau Joch uh, railway. For this um, mountain, if you start in Interlaken, for example, um, you can visit this very well. There are actually at the moment two ways you can travel up the mountain. You can go by Grindelwald, the Grindelwald area, that is one side of the mountain. And the other side of the mountain where you could go down again is by uh, Lauterbrunnen. And Lauterbrunnen itself is very beautiful as well. It's very famous for the many waterfalls you can find over there. So you can actually, if you like, you can travel up by one side of the mountain by train and travel down by the other side of the mountain, if you like. I'd like to give the word to Oliver to mm -hmm. give some... Yes, I, I agree with you and I absolutely recommend if you go to the Jungfrau Joch, go up on one side and go down to the other side so that you have a round trip again and you see all the, the nice villages and the country and uh, the countryside from both sides of the mountains. And uh, the trip itself, so I recommend, because it's also quite a high altitude, you plan a whole day for this. If you start in Interlaken, because the train ride up is about two hours, uh, then you might spend one to two hours on top of the mountain because you want to experience all the different activities that Katarina just mentioned. And then you go down, or maybe on the way down, you want to stop in Lauterbrunnen or Grindelwald, take some pictures of the beautiful villages to have a coffee somewhere or some, some desserts or whatever. So it's recommendable to plan enough time. If you are a bit short of time and you want to speed up, then you have to wait until December 5 this year because then there is a new opening. They are just building now most likely they are finished, otherwise they wouldn't be able to open in December, a new cable car that leaves from Grindelwald and it goes, uh, it takes 15 minutes only to go uh, to a station that is a bit above Kleine Scheidegg. This is the place where usually you have to change the train. So now the, the trip with this cable car is uh, 47 minutes faster than before. So you can save quite some time. So back and forth, it's uh, more than one and a half hours you save. So like this, you still have the time to explore more of the area or maybe even to add an additional mountain that uh, Katarina is introducing later on. And I don't know who of you is a big fan of uh, the Korean dramas, but if you are, then most likely you've seen this mountain before if you watched the you know, quite hip and trendy uh, crash landing on you this was shot in this area and you saw the main actors walking around on Kleine Scheidegg and also on the next mountain that we will introduce so for those guys who are uh, following the, the K uh, the K drama stars 
you can walk on their footsteps, follow their footsteps. Yeah, and even if you would decide to then uh, travel up by train, and yes, it takes two hours more or less, do not worry to get bored because there is a lot to see on the way. The views are stunning because the, the, the train is turning and then it makes a curve again and then you see a different view. So it's, it's just an adventure. It's a, a, a two hours train ride, but it's just a two hours adventure. It and then it's faster what, uh, than you think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And what Oliver said as well, if you then would like to get off the train and visit one of these typical villages, then you have to think about these villages with the chalets, with the flowers on the balconies and so on. So it's definitely a nice, uh, I think also a, a full day excursion. I would recommend that as well. Yeah. And since I was mentioning the discounts, here you have a 25% discount on this one and the next mountain, 25% with the Swiss travel pass. Yes, and the next mountain is uh, Mount Fierst. It's located. We have a question from Vishnu mm -hmm. asking uh, Is this where the famous white spider, the Eger, is? I think he's referring yes. to a book. Well, the Eiger Mountain is, yes, that's the, the Eiger Mountain is just next to Jungfrau Joch. This is one part of it. And you will be standing at the foot of Mount Eiger, and one stop is even in the mountain Eiger of the train so you could actually leave the train and uh, in in one of those caves you can take pictures of the Eiger glacier as well yeah. i don't know the book see. but Eiger, yes is there yeah. yeah you will see it very well during the train right to the top of jungfrau Joch. you can see this Eiger mountain as well uh, very well from different perspectives actually good then the next mountain mm -hmm. it's uh, mount fierst more, sorry there's some more question if i might interrupt uh, we, we, we are having some medical questions here already um <laughs> dr oliver would you dr. like to answer? oliver my, oh my god <laughs> um, well don't you worry too much about mountain sickness yes i mean i don't want to lie to you i don't want to uh, uh, play it down uh, it's it's a high altitude and if you're not uh, cope very well with the altitude the best thing is just go down again yeah. uh, that's the best best medication uh, you can bring some aspirin diamox i would not recommend uh, this is rather for even higher mountains and uh, maybe for even for more uh, active uh, experiences when you are on top of the mountain in this altitude, just walk slowly, don't rush, uh, drink enough water. And if you really start to feel dizzy, then take uh, an aspirin and try to go down as soon as possible with the next train, then everything will be fine. So okay. don't you yeah. worry about that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because as soon as you reach a lower altitude, uh, the mountain sickness will be gone. That's yeah. a good uh, solution for it. Okay, then are there any more questions or shall we move on? Yeah, you should. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Okay, then we are uh, in the same area still, in the Grindelwald area. So this area with the chalets and the beautiful flowers. And there is another mountain uh, located here, which is Mount Fierst. Um, and this one is the perfect place to go for people who love outdoor sports. You can see here all these, uh, these images of these fun activities. Um, you can do the first flyer, there is this cliff walk, which you, which you can do over here. It's quite a, quite a nice experience walking over these bridges, we can call it, until the platform, having beautiful views over the area, and definitely these fun activities for uh, people who love outdoor sports. This mountain is a little bit lower than the Jungfrau Joch mountain, so don't worry, here, here it's really possible and doable to do these kind of activ activities. The chance to suffer from altitude sickness over here is rather very 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 small because it's only let's say 2000 meters high so it's absolutely doable to be a little bit more active and a little bit more sportive um, on top of this mountain any suggestions from oliver's side uh yes definitely you have to try those uh, fun activities even though if you're not uh, very sporty uh, and you don't like physical activity that much. This is really uh, fun and uh, enjoyable. 
and uh, easy to, to access uh, because the starting point of those flyers, the dragon, the glider or the, the mountain carts, there are even uh, some scooters. Uh, they are just next to the cable car station. There are some different um, parts, uh, different sectors. And actually you just go from one cable car station to the next uh, going down. Instead of taking the cable car back, you just take one of the, the scooters or the carts. And it's like rediscovering the child in you, I tell you. It's really fun. It's really fun. Good. Then we have the last mountain in this area. It's called the uh, Schiltor Mountain. A little bit higher again, almost 3,000 meters. Still located in the Swiss Alps and also with uh, a guarantee of snow. I mean, you can find snow here um, all year long on the top of the mountain where is the peaks. Now, this mountain is very famous because of the James Bond movies that were, uh, the, the James Bond movie that was recorded here in the Swiss Alps was recorded on the Schildhorn Mountain. That's why we have several activities connected to James Bond, the Bond world. Um, of course, there is again a hiking uh, trail and there is this skyline or thrill walk. That means it's like a round trip, we can say, on the top of this mountain with several activities. So you have this bridge over here, um, you have a sightseeing platform, um, there is a platform from crystal, so you would stand on the crystal and if you look down, you can see the valley uh, under your feet. So this is several activities you can do on top of uh, this mountain. I would also say this is a good mountain to visit if you would start in Interlaken, Grindelwald area, you can uh, easily uh, access to this mountain with the cable car as well. And it's good to take a day, I think, for this visit because there are so many activities to do. Of course, all of these mountains we are talking in the, uh, about in the Bernice Oberland, so in the Jungfrau area, you can combine them with a visit to the city of Interlaken as well that city which is located between the two lakes we showed you at the beginning of the presentation because Interlaken is very famous for shopping as well. You can call it maybe the shopping paradise from the area. So if you would like to have some nice discounts of the tax or the taxes back, for example, it's all possible in Interlaken and you find the world there. So if you want a Swiss watch or you want to buy a Swiss knife or you want to take some chocolates home, then this is a nice place uh, to go. Very well combinable with these mountains. So what is Lucerne? For the first couple of mountains we spoke about is basically the city of Interlaken for these three mountains, Mount Fierst, the Jungfrau, Joch Mountain and this uh, Schildhorn Mountain. Yeah, and from my side I'm a bit uh, a big fan of James Bond. I saw all the movies and for me this is definitely a must to go there. Uh, one of the activities I like the most, there is uh, the, if you know the, the movie it's, uh, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, there is quite a spectacular chase in a, in a bobsleigh and you can do this bobsleigh chase. Uh, you sit in the sleigh and then you see the movie and then what you have to do, you really have to move and in the end they, they tell you whether uh, you were able to, to catch the villain or not uh, in a way like that. So that's, that was uh, quite fun. And what I also like about uh, the Schildhorn is it's actually like on the, on the border of the, the Alpine area. And if you walk, uh, watch to the other side, you see the, the, the flatlands and you see, actually you could almost, if the weather allows, you could almost, uh, you could actually see up uh, north, uh, you could see Germany, uh, you, you can see over the whole, whole country. And the picture you see on the right hand side, uh, you also have the view to the, to the Jungfrau Joch and the Eiger mountain again. So it's a fantastic panorama, uh, two sides, two different landscapes. And the restaurant they have on top, which is or was actually like the main uh, site for the movie, is a revolving restaurant. Uh, so while sitting there and having your lunch, you will have one 360 turn and you see the whole scenery while you're having your uh, James Bond brunch or whatever you feel like having there. And on the, on the way down, uh, I 
recommend to make a little stop in the village of Müren. This is halfway down and Müren is one of the car-free villages in Switzerland. And Christina mentioned before that you have these wooden houses, the chalets with, with the flowers outside on the windows. So very, it's like a picture perfect village. And to have a little stop there, it's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. And uh, again, 50% discount on this mountain with the Swiss travel pass. And uh, not only for the James Bond fans, but for the ones among you, you have to go there. Okay. So I don't know if there are any questions at the moment about this area, the Swiss Alps or the Bernice Oberlands, the Jungfrau Anyone has area. any questions? No, nope, so far I think we are good. Yeah, we are good, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Then we move on to the last area of tonight, and that is uh, the south of Switzerland with another car free village, Zermatt. Zermatt is not possible to reach by car. If you want, need to go to Zermatt because you want to visit the mountains in the area, and you have two possibilities you can go by train, of course, from Tash. There is a big train terminal with a lot of connections to Zermatt, so you can take the train up to Zermatt or you can take a kind of um, electric taxi. That's also a possibility to do from Tash until you then are in the car-free village Zermatt. Now in Zermatt is located, I think, the most famous mountain of all Switzerland, the Matterhorn mountain, a little bit higher even than the Jungfrau Joch mountain, above 4,000 uh, meters, 4,478 to be precise. And you reach uh, the Klein Matterhorn, so not the top of the Matterhorn mountain, but a little bit before, by cable car. What you can do there, um, by the way, a highlight from it, it's the highest cable car station in Europe. So that's something very special, definitely. And on the way, you will have a fantastic view over the glaciers, um, over the snow. You can see skiers there, even in, uh, in summertime. Um, it's a, a beautiful place to be. On the top you have the, the Matterhorn Glacier Paradise, of course, you can go hiking in the area, you can go skiing there as well. It's quite challenging to go skiing in the Matterhorn area, but for those who are talented and need a little bit of adrenaline, it's possible to do. And you can have, of course, fun in the snow. So also on the 1st of July, the 1st of August, you can stand in the snow, in your t-shirt, if you like it, in your shorts, maybe take a jacket with you just in case, but it's a fantastic experience to stand in the snow in summertime. And this mountain is very famous in wintertime um, for uh, skiers. A lot of people, not only foreigners, but also Swiss people, like to come skiing in the Matterhorn area. That's the first mountain in uh, a reachable, accessible from, uh, from Zermatt. And you just mentioned the skiing uh, and that you can stand in the snow in summertime and you can also ski in summertime up there. So there you can have your very special ski experience without being cold actually, because when the sun is shining, it's quite warm, even though the temperature on the thermometer are quite low, but it feels quite warm. And uh, maybe something else. I mean, if there are some skiers among you, what you could do is you could ski actually to Italy because there is the border to Italy. You can, in the, the same ski resort, you can ski down to Italy and then come back to Switzerland. And uh, this is something that you might like as well to cross a border and have two countries in one day. So do we have to bring our passport with us? It's recommendable, yes. <laughs> Even though it's both in the Schengen area. So they, <laughs> there are sometimes some policemen on the slopes, mm -hmm. uh, like border control, but... Yeah. Uh, don't you worry too much <laughs> about that, but to be on the safe side, always bring your, your passport anyway. Sure. So in but case you are honest, caught, uh, just say uh, Oliver is a friend. Oliver yeah? said that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he told me we should do that. But what I realized, the view to the Matterhorn from the Italian side is not as spectacular. I didn't recognize the mountain when I was standing on the other side. I didn't recognize the Matterhorn. So the, the typical shape you see on the pictures below on the slide, this is only from the Swiss side, the unique view. 
exactly. Yeah, this is the the image. I think if we talk about Matterhorn, everybody uh, has in mind exactly. Um, yeah, this is a nice place to visit actually during all the year. Um, winter makes it maybe even a little bit more special because, you know, it's Zermatt, it's a car-free village. They have also these wooden houses. And in winter time, as in many beautiful villages in Switzerland, it's very nicely decorated with all the Christmas decoration, the Christmas lights. So if you want to spend some winter holidays, then this is a nice place uh, to go. December, fantastic area. Um, not only the Matterhorn mountain though, a little bit more off the beaten path, let's say, is the Gornegrad mountain at the other side of uh, Zermatt. Actually on one side you have the cable cars to go up this climb Matterhorn and then at the other side you have uh, the possibility to go up the Gornegrad mountain. Um, here you go by train though, so you don't take a cable car, you go by train until the top and on the top of the Gornegrad mountain you have a fantastic view over the Matterhorn itself, because you're standing at the other mountain, you have the view over, um, over the Matterhorn, so over this very famous mountain. And at the same time, you have a spectacular view over the Gorner Glacier. This is really a fantastic experience. You are at approximately 3000 meters of um, altitude. And if you would go to the middle station, so not completely the top, but down to the middle station, you will find this beautiful lake located there. This is called, uh, in German, it's called the uh, Riffelsee. It's a fantastic lake with a spectacular view. I think for those who like to take pictures, it's maybe even the best place to go to take a picture from the Matterhorn mountain because you have also this reflection here inside of the lake. So this is definitely a fantastic place to go to take some nice pictures from the, from the Matterhorn mountain. Part of that, you can walk around this lake it's a nice, uh, yeah, a nice short hike to do, doesn't take very long. And um, at the same time, you have several hiking paths um, in that area. So you can, if you want around the lake, if you want in the area itself, go a little bit off the beaten path, take some beautiful photos from the area, and then you can at any time jump back in the train and travel back down to the valley where it's then uh, Zermatt located again. But you can see it when you visit this uh, Gornegrad mountain, you have actually the best pictures, the best possibility to take nice photos from the Matterhorn mountain because you are a little bit more distant and it's a fantastic, um, yeah, fantastic view over this very famous uh, Swiss mountain. So these are the two possibilities if you are in the south or you go up to the Matterhorn mountain directly, a little bit lower, climb Matterhorn or you go to the Gornegrad mountain from where you have the best view over the Matterhorn mountain. So it's definitely a must do, I would say, when you visit uh, Switzerland. You should come to, to Zermatt and visit one or both of the mountains, of course. If you would like to visit both, then that's also a possibility. But just take a day for the Gornegrad and take a day for the Klein Matterhorn mountain because of the altitude and the, the travel time. If you are in a hurry and you don't have too much time, there is now even a ticket, it's called the peak to peak ticket that combines the two mountains. So you don't have, there, there is a shortcut in between. So you don't have to go up, down to the village, cross the whole village, go up to the other mountain. So there is a possibility to, to have a shortcut if you are in a hurry, but to be in a hurry in Switzerland is not the best uh, best idea. Take your time because Switzerland can be so relaxing. So it would it, it would be a, a bad idea to to rush and to, to to stress yourself. And maybe some something else to add because uh, now we're talking about the mountains that are very high and there are cable cars going up and you're in the countryside. You might be worried that this is far away from the airport and when you have to fly back after your best holiday ever, uh, that you have to leave this beautiful scenery very early or it takes you a long time to travel back. This is not true. Even though uh, Zermatt, for example, is at the complete other end of the country compared to where the airport is, it takes you by public transportation less than three hours Across the whole country to be at the airport. So if you have an evening flight and if you take uh, the direct flight from Zurich to Singapore with Swiss International Airlines that leaves in the evening, you can still spend 
uh, time in the mud in the morning and maybe then after after your lunch you go towards uh, Zurich airport and you fly back in the evening so no need to go one day earlier so actually from all over wherever you are in Switzerland if you have an evening flight you can still enjoy the time in any place in Switzerland and you have enough time to go back to uh, to the airport so that's a big advantage of our small country and very well connected country yeah. and yeah one last thing this was uh, one of the most emotional moments i had uh, this year especially when we were not able to travel uh, end of april there was uh, like a an artistic installation in zermatt uh, there is a so-called light artist he illuminated this matterhorn and I'm not sure whether you saw it or not, but they projected flags of countries on, on this mountain. And a uh, big honor for Singapore, they really projected the Singaporean flag on this mountain. I mean, this picture is still in the internet, you can still find it. And it was, uh, for me, sitting here in Singapore, seeing, let's say, my mountain with the flag of the nation I've been living for six years, it was... Uh, it was a very touchy, touching moment to me. A reason to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah, you Basically, shared it already. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So Zermatt is is uh, is one of my favorite towns in in uh, Switzerland as well. And there's something really magical about this town, and that is the sunrise. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I, I would really suggest that you have to cater at least two days of stay in Zermatt town. And basically what you do is in the early morning, you basically you grab your jacket, you have your camera ready, and you go out to some of the viewing points available around the town to get a good position okay, of the, the metal horn. And thereafter, once the sun starts to rise, you actually see the tip of metal horn starts to turn orange or even golden. Okay, and this this thing basically lasts for a good 30 to 45 minutes if the weather is good okay, and clear. So, so it's really one of the most magical sunrise that I've ever witnessed. So for those in Zermatt, you know, uh, make some effort to wake up really early okay, the, to witness the sunrise at least once. And uh, the reason why you have to spend at least two days is you may not get it on your first day. You, know, <laughs> you, you probably have to spend uh, another two mornings to, to get it. I was lucky I got it on my first morning. So if you want to sleep a bit longer, go in winter time because in winter time the sunrise is later. Yeah. So this is one thing. And I don't know, did you did you see the the famous bridge uh, in Zermatt that is one of the most popular photo spots? It's actually in the middle of the uh, of the town, more or less. Yes, next to the just next to the church, there is a little little river. A small bridge and from there in the morning you also have a, a perfect angle uh, to the Matterhorn. So this is for those who are struggling to get up very early, they can still go to, the, to this bridge. Yes. And you just have to walk a few minutes, maybe two minutes. Just That's true. I mean, this, this is also something that uh, is uh, quite unique. Yeah. If you walk, you could cross the whole town in... 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. From the train station that is on one mm -hmm. end to the cable car station that brings you up to Klein Motterhorn, it's 20 minutes. Yeah, so, or less. Or less, yeah, yeah, depending on, on the speed and how many yes. pictures you want to take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do we have any questions uh, regarding Zermatt? So far, I think no questions. Oh, how about going to the spot at picture tree? Picture tree, you mean the picture in the center? The one in the center, huh? Yeah, that is Gronagrat. Yeah, so that would be the, we could say like, a, you, you, you take the train and more or less at the middle station, you would get off the train and you reach this spot. You walk yes. just a little bit and you find yeah. this lake and then you have this fantastic view over uh, the Matterhorn Mountain. Yes, just about five minutes away from the middle station. Yeah. Okay, I think, yep. No questions for Zermatt. 
No questions for Zermatt. Okay. Then we have here the last, um, yeah, the last slide with some information about uh, the participants and if you have some more questions, but I would like to give the word to Ming at this point, sure. I think. Yeah. Okay, are there any final questions uh, from the audience? Meanwhile, uh, I would just like to highlight to you guys, there are many other considerations uh, when planning which mountains to visit. But uh, unfortunately, we are unable to share everything over this one uh, short session. So some of the most important considerations are things like the altitude of the mountains. You now, this is something that you shouldn't underestimate. Uh, you cannot be visiting high mountains on your first or second day of uh, arrival. And uh, or rather, you should progressively go up uh, to the various heights accordingly. And the other considerations are things like uh, the duration of time you have to travel in this country. You know, certain mountains you can do day trips, certain mountains we will recommend that you actually do overnight trips. So, so these are some considerations as well. And also uh, the kind of activities you want to do uh, and whether the difficulty level is suitable for you. For example, hiking, uh, is it a very difficult hike or is it an easy hike for you? So these are some things that you need to consider. And finally, of course, is the cost. So uh, you can talk to us and uh, to see whether you can actually maximize your dollars by using the Swiss travel pass. Okay, that is a very useful uh, transportation pass that you can use to get, to maximize your dollars basically. So do speak to us if you need help in all these things and uh, we will actually recommend accordingly. Okay, uh, Vishnu is saying, could we see the map again on these places? So I think that is the second slide. Yeah, let me go back to the beginning. So the three regions we spoke about today are Lucerne. Yeah, that's yeah. here. Your frown. Lucerne area. Yeah, and Zermatt. Then exactly. Then we go here to the area of Jungfrau and Mount Fist. It's over here, the center, the Alps. And here in the south, we have um, Zermatt with Matterhorn and Gornegrat. And as uh, Oliver mentioned you can see here the border with Italy so that's why if you go skiing yeah. in this area it can be you ski down the mountain and you end up in uh, in Italy close from the border so Lucerne here here Jungfrau area this green area and then here in pink the southern area with Matterhorn and Gornegrat and maybe interesting for you to know that the international airport we were talking about is this one here in Zurich. So the trip from Matterhorn area, Zermatt, by train or by car until Zurich would take approximately three hours. Yes. Okay, we have a good question. Uh, any season to avoid going to the mountains? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome. You're always. No, you can... Actually, if you, uh, the experience is different. If you go in summer or in winter, it's like a complete different setting. It depends on the activities you want to do. Yes. I mean, if you want to ski, then better to go in winter time. Then you have uh, more chances if you're more into hiking and not so low temperatures than go in summer. So it really depends on your, uh, on your preference. But you can visit the mountains almost all year round. There are certain periods where they have like maintenance uh, or some activities are, or some cable cars are closed for a short period, but there is always a mountain you can visit in Switzerland all year round. Okay. Okay, any more questions? Share information link. Please share. Uh, this the last slide again. Huh? I'm going there. So maybe sure. also if, if someone, because there was the, the question for the map, uh, if you are here in Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, we have our office, uh, the Switzerland Tourism Office is at the Embassy of Switzerland. So feel free to drop by and we can yeah. provide some of the maps as well, or you can download it from the, the website you see there. There is actually a, a very good map uh, with all the information about the Swiss travel system with the trains and the tickets and the area of validity. And on the back, on the rear part, there is a, a map of, of whole Switzerland with all the, the areas uh, we have been talking about. So uh, you can either download it, watch, uh, check it online, 
uh, or you can, if you really want to have a physical map, uh, just uh, drop by and we provide this for free. Just end the slide here. Any more questions? Uh, looks like we are done. Okay, so with this, I would like to thank uh, Katerina and Oliver for providing your valuable insights of the mountains of Switzerland. And thank you everyone here who took time out uh, basically to join us for this session. I hope there are in uh, valuable information for you to take away tonight. And uh, I look forward to you joining us again two weeks later on the 30th of September, 8.30 p.m. Okay, meanwhile, do take care and good night. Uh, for those who have more questions, you can always stay back and uh, we'll be around to, to assist you. Yeah, thank you very much. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. See you in Switzerland. <laughs>